All right, we're back in the closet, and we're going to chat about toxic relationships. What a topic. I mean, this is such a broad topic because I feel like when you talk about toxic relationships, you immediately go to a love interest, whether it's your spouse, your significant other, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, somebody that you're romantically and emotionally involved with in that type of way. But I don't feel like it always has to be that way. I feel like you could be in a toxic relationship with a friend, with a dad, with With a a, mom, with a kid, with a cousin, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, we we uh, been we didn't really do deep research on this, but we found something uh, a list a a article that we're gonna like kind of base this just, off yeah, of just for now. Get us get us get us going. Just to like, yeah. And, and I'll say that. this before before we jump in, we've got this article, but I've also seen some other things on toxic relationships and how to make a toxic relationship healthy. So that might be something to follow up this will follow up this one with at some point because I I don't know enough about tox relationships but I, I know that they can they you can rehab them if both parties wants to. Right. Um but we'll jump into Th- this. This but this is what's the top what's the title of this? How do you know? Like eight sign here. How was it called? Eight signs you're in a toxic relationship. Eight signs you're in a toxic Sick relationship, and I don't think it matters if I don't think they're necessarily talking about a love interest here. I don't, I don't know. Maybe they are. Right. Did I skip some? Yeah. Whoops. Okay. Okay. And I'll say this too that that I think it's important that as as people as humans that we probably when you go through something like this we probably all have bits and pieces of toxic traits. Sure. I think we've all had toxic times in our relationships where we've not handled things right or we've gone through a selfish period. You know what I mean? Like, I know that I've I probably can say I've been, when I was younger, could have been toxic in certain ways. Mm-hmm. But I think that's kind of just a disclaimer that right. nobody's... If if you hit on three out of eight of these, it doesn't mean that you're probably... doesn't there. necessarily mean that you're in a toxic relationship. You know what I'm saying? Right. But number one, this is of eight signs that you may be in a toxic relationship. Number one is you're not happy. Okay. Well, everyone has unhappy days, days when they're sad, emotional, exhausted over it. But if these days are the majority of your days and you're struggling to find happiness in your relationship, then this is a sign of a toxic relationship. So they're not saying like, you know, you're going to go through times where you're not happy about what the situation, what's going on. Right. But I think that, like it was saying, that if if they are if they're the majority of the days, like if you if you're like, oh wow, today was a good day, that might be a bad sign. Instead of saying, ah oh, wow, today sucked, you know what I mean? Like all the time, like the majority of our times together are good, but there are some really bad times, and sometimes those times go on. Maybe you have a bad month. That doesn't mean that you're in a toxic relationship. Am I right? Not at all. Right. Yeah. Did you no. be going through stuff? I think if it, it, it like we've always said about relationships, if you're gonna if you're gonna live with someone, if you're gonna do life with someone, and you're gonna deal with stress, you're gonna deal with kids, you're gonna deal with financial difficulties, right? Uh, you're gonna deal with cars breaking, and you can deal with stuff that that you're having trouble sleeping. You're obviously going to take that out on the people closest to you. So that doesn't mean because you're going through a hard time that and your actions might not be always. Right. Positive towards the person you love. It doesn't. No, I agree. It's no. not, not a toxic relationship. It's just. I mean, if you look, if you wake up in the morning and you look over at the other person, and you're like, and you immediately feel unhappy. That's not a good sign, right? Probably. Because I can not. be as mad as you as I want to be, and I might look over at you and be like, oh, "I see something. I'm hurt today. I'm hurt today. I'm hurt today." But you don't. But inside, you're not like, ur, ur, you know what I mean? Right. Um. I think, and you know what, that this is something that I heard someone else say, a doctor on a podcast that's a psychologist, say because they were talking about, they are talking about relationships and they were saying, well, you and your wife have been married for 30 some years. And he said, yes. And like we said, you have a lot of problems. He said, but what I figured out is it's like, it's like recovery. It's like being, if you're, if you, if, if, you were an alcoholic 
and you, you, it's what is today. If if I can find good in today with this person, and I'm attracted to them today, and they do it for me today, then they should be able to do it for me tomorrow. Right. Right. I mean. That he said it's when you let it get out of control and you don't take it day by day, right. step by step, which right. I thought was good advice because we tend to get in that cruise cruise control mode and then you lose track of each other. Um, we're, we're here also with our TikTok people here on the side. And someone just said, ever heard of gaslighting? And that's funny that you say that because we did a whole entire... Oh, and I meant to look up the podcast episode numbers to refer back to. We did a whole podcast on gaslighting we did and i think we've all been i'm pr- i could i feel like we could safely say that probably all of us in one shape way shape or form have been gaslighted by someone or gaslighted someone or gaslighted someone i can i can probably say that maybe i have i don't know but i mean i i, I think that's a common thing that people fall into it before. There's levels of it. There is levels of it. And, and when you're doing it to a person and you know that you're making them second guess, you're making them feel crazy mm-hmm. and second guessing mm-hmm. themselves. Like, I feel like you could easily do it to me. Right. Um, because I don't ever remember what I say. Right. <laughs> so she could just say, well, well I, yeah, you promised me that. You promised me that every night for the last week. And I'm like, I've never, ever thought about that. I don't know. But then eventually you just start going, wait, am I crazy? Well, and I feel like, too, that you can be gaslighted by your kids. I feel like my kids gaslight me sometimes because I, I am a forgetful person. And they use that to my disadvantage. But, yeah, we did a whole podcast on that. I wish I would have remembered to go back and look up our old podcast. And if I was coordinated enough to run two different We'll put, we'll, 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 you know, but, we need to make a list of all of our relationship topic podcast and list them on Instagram. True. Yeah, you know, I can true. make it. I can make a post where we put here's the podcast for true. about relationships that we've done. We had another charger somewhere off topic. But, well, I grabbed this um, one from there. It was just laying up here. Anyway, so number two on this list is you can't talk without fighting. I'm just reading this list here, and then we can talk about it. Um, there is this belief that all couples fight, uh, but this is not true at all. Fighting is meant to make the other person feel bad, and you should never intend on making the person you love and are committed to feel bad. Some couples argue, and this is completely different. You can disagree on a topic, argue your point, and still have a respectful conversation when you're fighting. There's no respect at all. I don't think that's true. I don't, And just because we have these lists don't mean that we agree with them. I... I don't really necessarily agree with this point. I think fighting is not necessarily meant to make the other person feel bad. Because here's why I say that. There's certain types I, of fighting. I feel like that a lot of times you're fighting because you're in fight or flight. Because your your spouse or whomever has brought an issue up to you that maybe you've done something wrong. So your initial reaction is if when Jeff's brought to my attention that I've done something to bother him or hurt him and we end up fighting, my intent is not to make him feel bad. My intent is to protect myself. So it's coming out into in a fight. That's, that's a good point. That's you know a really, saying? yeah, that's a really good point. Cause I think almost everybody, I have a real problem with it. I think almost everybody doesn't want to have hurt somebody. Right. Or they don't, especially if you don't mean to, but right. you know, that's true. Cause it, it, we all do the defense thing where we're not really thinking, okay, I hurt you. I want to make it better for you right away. Your first instinct is like, wait, wait, wait. No, I didn't mean to Protect like yourself. That. That's like, everybody's that's crap. Part. But you're the one that made me do it because you said this. Mm-hmm. I would have never acted like that. if right. you would've... And then you get into this whole thing. And then right. usually we're good about not backing down to each other. And the, the one that was really at fault eventually we tend to right. right? I mean – this this says you you can't have a if you can't have a conversation without it turning into a fight this is a big sign of a toxic relationship. Yes. yes. If you can't even have one conversation without it turning into a fight that's a problem. There are so many times that you know Jeff will bring something to me or I'll bring something to him where maybe he's made me mad like the other night. He he we talked about this on his live in the morning like something happened and and it and it made me put off by it. I was put off by it. But I was talking about it. It didn't turn into a big, huge fight. You know what I mean? Not everything should turn into a fight. I guess that is a sign of a toxic relationship. But I do think that just because you fight with someone doesn't mean you're out looking to make them feel bad. I think it can. Nah, I think that I they're think talking can, about people, that, but, personalities that are, are, are combative. Yeah. 
You Always, know, where you're yeah. defensive or yeah. you're... Com- I have friends like that where it's like they're sensitive or right. it's combative and they're always taking things the wrong way. And I have to say, hey, you know, I don't mean it that way. Right. Um, this list doesn't necessarily deal with the actual narcissist toxic relationship. Again, we did a whole entire podcast on narcissist. Um, so that's not really where this is going. I know that's a popular term it's when like you're the talking 2020 about. 2020 popular. I think it's a popular term when you talk about toxic relationship, narcissist comes up. Um, That's not what this is really geared towards necessarily. It can mean that. But I think it's just this article is including all toxic uh, relationships, whether it's mental abuse, um, narcissist, um, probably gaslighting, probably um, any any of them. Okay. um, Number three. Number three sign that you could be, could be in a toxic relationship. You avoid sharing how you feel. Your partner asks, how are you? And you avoid the conversation because you do not want to share with them how you feel. You know if you do, they will mock you, make fun of you, or make fun of you, or make fun of you and make you feel like you're being silly. If this sounds familiar, then you are in a toxic, you could be in a toxic relationship. You should always feel confident to share how you feel, knowing that you will be heard, loved, and respected. That's a big one because I think a lot of times. Um, I, I can't speak on a guy's stand, uh, a guy's um, side, obviously, but I know for me, if I feel like I'm getting ready to tell Jeff that I'm feeling a certain type of way, and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I don't even know why I'm doing this. He's gonna make fun of me. He's gonna he's gonna pawn it off to I'm just being silly, or I'm just being dumb, or I'm overreacting, or this or that. That that is kind of bad. I, you know, me growing up, um, I don't want. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not bashing my parents here. I had good parents. Um, We had some struggles, but I did have ultimately good parents. But this rings home to me because I never felt like I could tell my parents truly how I felt as a a child, as a teenager, um, because I always, I I was never validated, right? I feel like that um, growing up, I, my feelings were never validated. So I think that's what where this maybe is coming from. Like I felt like if I went to my mom and told her about a breakup I had or about me being nervous about this or that, I always got the response, well, it could be worse. Quit being sad. That's not that big of a deal. Well, it was to me. You know what I mean? So I try not to do that with my kids. Like I keep that in the forefront. When they come to me with a breakup or with something that I think is kind of stupid, I try to remember in the back of my mind, be be to them the mom that you needed when you were their age, right? I had a good mom. I'm not saying that she provided. I'm just saying. I try to take a step back and think about what they need and try to provide that for them. And that's kind of like guys. I think guys are worse at this when, when, you do, when we do that, when we go, ah, it could be worse. I mean, and you, we try to fix it because we don't want there to be conflict. We don't want there to be issues and we want it to go away. And that's right. kind of a sign that tells the person, I don't care. Right. Which your mom cared. Oh, she did. I'm not but saying she, she didn't. But she just didn't want to deal with it. But how much better would it I make you? I get that. Would it make you? I know she didn't want it's to deal terrible, with it. It's terrible. I know. But I, I understand that from her point. And I hate that because I can tend to be that way with my kids. is dismissive when I need to be more open like you are. Yeah. You, you don't need to be dismissive. I mean, when, when they come to us with a breakup, you're thinking, you're 15. So you had a breakup. It's not the end of the world. I'm dealing with financial trouble. Or I'm dealing with this. It doesn't matter. To them, it's the end of the world, and that's all that should matter in that moment. Same thing in a relationship like, you know, with us. Whether you've had a bad day at work, and I'm coming with you saying a client hurt hurt my feelings, and you're like, okay, a client hurt your feelings, but I just lost a big deal at work, so whatever. You yeah, know what I mean? It doesn't the, matter. The one-upper. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so here's – it kind of goes along with what this next one is. Number four sign that you could be in a toxic relationship. Everything is a competition. A little competitiveness in a relationship can be fun. But if everything you do turns into competition, this could be a sign that you're in a toxic relationship. This is the most prevalent in the tit for tat types of situation where there's fighting about who does more, who's more tired, who is more X, Y, Z. A relationship isn't a competition. It's a partnership. If your competitive side isn't fun anymore and it just adds up to more stress and it's a sign of being of being in a toxic relationship. We have competition all the time. We have water drinking competition. I think that we're low-key having a competition in TikTok. You know what I'm saying? I mean, fun. Just for fun. Yeah, but we are. We're, we're competitive uh, people, but not when it comes to things that hurt. No. Not when it comes to like... I don't get... I think some people get bent out of shape like they're thinking... 
Right. Well, I do, I do all the laundry. Right. And I'm cleaning, and, and I, like, and I, you feel bad if you sit down. I think my parents kind of, my dad, my mom, my mom never sat down. My dad never sat down. It's right. like that they had this, like, I can, and she, I can, on a Saturday, if she wants to clean, if she wants to do the laundry, and I've done what I need to do, I can sit down and kick my feet up, and I don't have to feel one ounce of guilt that right. she's going to be upset with me. Now, what do I do every time the same thing she does? I go, is there anything I can help you? I feel weird sitting down here right. and chilling while you're still doing stuff. But I think that's just empathy and being a decent person. I don't find, too, with us that I, I, that I, you ever, you know, I feel like we appreciate each other's jobs. And, you know, I'll talk about having a long day. And you're, you never say, like, we want to hear about a long day. I don't, you know what I mean? I, we might have fallen into that every once in a while. I'll be like, you know, we might have. It's very. But it's, but it's not. It doesn't no. stick. It doesn't stay. So I feel like, yeah, if everything's a competition, then it's. it's you want to know why it doesn't stay? Is because I think when those things happen. We both are at a level in our relationship where we get freaking irritated and right. we deal with it. And right. then if you keep doing it after somebody's addressed right. a concern right. or something that bothers them, then, then I think that's where you end up with a lot of problems. Right. Anyway. Um, number five, sign that you could be in a toxic relationship. When you feel you can't say no. No is an important word in any relationship. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I... I I've recently, well, not recently, within the past couple of years, discovered the word no, not necessarily in our relationship. Um, Me too, honestly. Right. Like, I'm, I'm was the same as you. Like, my whole life I was brought up and it was, you make everybody happy. Right. You make everybody happy. Um, it, it's, what, what? No is an important word in any relationship. It sounds boundaries. I think it meant sets. Boundaries. It allows for freedom to express yourself and it allows to be able to pull back and retreat to your own safety. In most relationships, this can be simple as saying no to going out to dinner with friends because you are tired from work and would rather stay home and rest or saying no to intimacy because you're not in the mood. But this becomes toxic when you feel like you can't say no for fear of response or repercussion. So I think, I think that's a good, I think that's true. Like we can be open and honest with each other and you know what I mean? And just say no. And I, I, I feel so happy that that can be that I don't have to do everything you say or want and vice versa and it, but it wasn't always like that that you go through struggles I think people think that they they can have this thing and that the other person needs to understand it immediately I think you have to wrestle you right. have to struggle through the way each other feel right and and figure out where how to deal with it because there's egos involved there's feelings involved there's self conscious there's there's self-esteem things involved right. you know if men and sex if they don't get a certain time sometimes they feel like a loser or even they're not wanted women if they're not you know taken care of emotionally they feel like they're not loved and cared for there's right. all kinds of facets to it and it's so complicated but right. i agree um I'm sorry, I got off track by reading somebody. Somebody on on, on TikTok says, "Nope, you got to listen to the woman all the time. You got you got to listen all the time. You're the woman." <laughs> Moving on. on You're not that married, one. are you? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, number six. I was going to say I thought he was saying "happy wife, happy life" thing. I was like, "Oh, smart guy." I'm not listening to. I'm my own person. Um, that's the problem. Um, you, if you. If you think that because we're women that we have to listen to exactly what the man says, we are not in caveman time anymore. This is 2020. So you're going to have to get a grip on that. So good I'm luck joking. out there. Um, anyway, you could have been joking, but I have a feeling maybe not. Okay, number six. Do you feel like you're always walking on eggshells? Do you feel like you have to gauge your partner's mood before you engage in a conversation with them? Um or do you feel like if you say or do the wrong thing, they will just go off? What? That's 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 a huge one. That's um, big. If you have to walk on eggshells around your your partner all the time, and we're excluding like that one one week a month. <laughs> that one well, week yeah, a month, I mean, you I, walk on eggshells. I I may I uh, 
I can, yeah, I mean, I can probably make everybody feel like they need to walk on eggshells because, you know, women can do that sometimes. Yeah. Menop- you should Menopause walk. is a mother. You are so right. I mean. You shouldn't it, walk into your home. That's what I've always said to people, uh, for people that, that aren't happy. I'm like, right. you got to go home from work and you don't want to walk into your house because you don't know what you're going to deal with. Right. You know what I mean? You don't know the person you're going to encounter. You don't know if they're going to be griping at you, if you're going right. to be able to be you in your home. That's your, that's your, that's where you should feel the best. Right. And I think that it's true. I mean, there, there are hormonal times. There are times, um, like it's a joke around my house when I, when I'm going through, cause I'm going through perimenopause. I'm 44 years old. And I'm starting to go through that. My mom went through menopause when she was really young. Full-blown menopause by the time she was at my age. So it's coming up on me. And I do have these um, outbursts or these uh, times where I go crazy. And, and, I, and, and we, we, make, we, we make fun of it in my house. It's called my alter ego called Felicia. So my kids will say, Mom, are you being Felicia right now? Like, it's a thing. It's funny. We laugh about it because I'm not always like that. So I don't feel like my kids have feel like and my husband has to walk on eggshells all the time. But there are flare-ups, right? And, it, and it's just like if he has a bad month at work or a bad week at work, he'll be a little irritable. And I'm like, what in the world? And we, you know we what don't, I mean? We don't, we don't, we don't flare up. We don't, we don't make fun while the flare-up's happening. We give it a couple of days to cool Yeah, I just kind of lay low. I'm like, okay. No, we do is what I'm saying about Felicia. When Felicia oh, plays up, we don't, Felicia, we don't yeah. joke about Felicia. I mean, I'm, that probably wouldn't be a good idea. You know what I'm Until saying? Until a few days later. So, um, but then usually yeah, it goes away. And, and usually my kids, like when I'm in that moment, they'll just be like, bye, Felicia, and walk away. And it's just like, I just kind of laugh because I know I'm being a certain type of way. But anyway, all right, number seven. Uh, we have two more real quick. Number seven, uh, you feel like you're not heard. A relationship is an equal partnership, and as such, you have an equal voice and opinion. Your thoughts, feelings, concerns, aspirations, and goals should be heard and acknowledged. If you feel like you're not being heard and your relationship is one-sided, this could be a sign of something more sinister. A toxic relationship starts with discontentment, and this is one of those subtle signs that starts out small and can build into something Far more toxic. I 100% believe that. If I feel like I'm not being heard, and I think that if he felt like he... um, Huh? (laughs) There's a difference in not being heard and him not listening. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking and and then, like, later he says something. like, if you would have just listened to what I was saying, that's not the same thing, right? If I sit him down, I'm like, I really need to talk to you about something. If I feel like that I'm not being heard, that I'm out. Because I can't can't be like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, if there's needs, if there's things that you're missing. Right. Or, or, or vice versa, I think. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying for anybody in a relationship. If you, if you have serious, you know, we did the podcast on the three things that are essential for your relationship to it must have. thrive. Yeah, yeah, the must-haves. I mean, right. you know, say one of those things you're missing or you feel like you're missing. Right. And you want to talk to your spouse about it, and they they're dismissive, or they don't listen to you, or they don't start giving you that. Um, I mean, it all goes back to being validated. Everybody wants to be validated. Everybody right? wants to be validated. Right. I I think so. One hundred. Everybody needs to be validated. Well, in yeah. A relationship. Yeah. And being validated doesn't necessarily mean you have to agree with what they're saying. No. You could one hundred percent disagree with what somebody's saying, and you can still validate your their feelings simply by saying. I'm sorry that you feel that way. I understand that you feel that way. I don't agree, but I understand and I get that you feel that way. You know what I mean? Like, just validate that they are not being stupid. You know what I mean? Like, make them feel stupid because then then the disagreement or whatever you get ready to go down is going to go real bad real fast. Right? Like, he's not listening to me right now, for instance. I heard what you said. Because he's on NakedWines.com. As we're doing this podcast, he's not listening to what we're saying. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm listening. I'm totally in it. But I am on Naked Wines as well. Um, Let's just hit this number eight topic real quick and we'll shut this down. Because I want to, um, I want to get some people together to do a panel kind of discussion. But anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. Number eight sign that you could be in a toxic relationship. You just don't care. You've reached to a point in your relationship where you just don't care. 
then you are most likely in the toxic relationship territory. This is toxic for not only your relationship, but for also your own happiness and well-being. Relationships require 100% effort. They aren't something you can half commit to and expect to have a happy and successful relationship. It's up to you to choose whether or not you're willing to put 100% effort in or not. And if it's not your partner that isn't putting in the effort, then you can't make them. It's their choice, and that's true. You can't make someone be a certain type of way. Mm -mm. You can't make them care. You can't make them understand. You can't make them love you. If that's the point that it's come to, then then I feel like that it's, you know what I mean? Well, and that's, what, what is it? Um, contempt. Yeah. That's, that to me, what they're saying there is contempt. And that's almost impossible to come back from. Right. So when you get to the place of contempt. That's the word I was looking for earlier that you said. Like, if you get, like you said, if you get to the place where you just don't care. I mean, there's resentment, but contempt is the next level. Right. And they say resentment's something you can come back from. But when you get to the point where you're the, the contempt, that's. Sure. You, you can, should protect your relationship from that. Sure, you can at be, all costs. You can be mad. You can fight. You can disagree. You can have arguments. Uh, and you and will. You and you'll have ongoing arguments. You'll have things that bother you about that person oh, sure. for the rest of your life. But guess what? You're going to have a problem with almost everybody that you spend that much time with. Yeah. You can't force somebody, which I think that's a toxic thing as well, is to force somebody to. Believe the way you believe, to, to think the way you think, right? or they're crazy, or they're an idiot. Yeah. No matter... Uh, yeah, that somebody on here says it's all over at that point, and it really is. Um, it really is over at that point. But here's what I want to do. Um, we came up with this toxic relationship uh, topic from our TikTok uh, live people. They wanted us to talk about it, and we did. But I want to take it a step further, and I want to get some people on here that, that are willing to talk about um, maybe some toxic relationships that they've been into. So we can get deeper into this. This is just scratching the surface, right? This is just giving you signs that you could be in one. But we want to talk to some people who maybe have possibly been in a toxic relationship. I can go a little bit more in detail in a relationship that obviously wasn't romantic relationship, but it was a different type of relationship that was kind of toxic and that really messed me up. Um, so we can get into that. So if you're interested in that, you know, let me know, let us know, and we can uh, schedule that maybe for sometime next week, close to this podcast going up because I want it to be back to back, right? I want this podcast to go up and then a few podcasts later to be the panel discussion. I'm talking not not many, like three people maybe. Because if you yeah, get too much, many, get, if you can't, can, if you get uh, many more than like three people, and it'll it's it'll be more than thirty minutes, and it'll be more than thirty minutes. It'll probably, it'll probably be, be an, an hour, hour or more, even maybe. But I think uh, I think it'll probably be at least an hour good. or more. Yeah, yeah. you get it'll to talking good. and you get into things you don't want to stop. Exactly. It. But we really uh, appreciate everybody listening in on this because uh, I think it's a real issue that people deal with, and 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 some point in their life, you're probably going to deal with some type of toxic relationship. And like I said at the beginning, I don't think it has to be with a husband, a wife, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a significant other. I think it can be with, I, I know people who, who their best friend is toxic to them. Absolutely. I tell my kids all the time to get away from, I mean, oh yeah, my mom, when I was growing up, when I, more when I got older and she became a psychologist, it, it was more of, you get the negative out of your life. Oh, yeah. She didn't use talks. She said, you get the negative people out of your life. I don't care who they are. Right. I don't care if they're your brother. I don't care if they're your mother. I don't care. You get the negative people out of your life, which sounds crazy and cruel because you're tied emotionally to someone that is your blood, maybe. But if they're destroying you and bringing you down, you've got to, you've got to figure out a way to, to live a happier and better life. Yeah, and I think this may sound weird and crazy, and you guys may not agree with me. This may be way out there, but I feel like social media could be a toxic relationship that you're in because, oh, yeah. um, you know, I know that uh, with my line of work, um, being a personal trainer, I feel like that a lot of my clients are in a toxic relationship with Instagram, and you, and you might be laughing right now and say, what? Yeah, I'm serious. Um, flipping through Instagram and comparing yourself. Or being controlled by what you see on Instagram and trying to be someone who you may not actually be or want to be, for that matter. Uh, Facebook, yeah, Facebook's another one. I divorced Facebook. Um, I divorced Facebook back when all this craziness happened. Uh, 
And I started really over obsessing about this virus out there. I just left it. And I, do you know what? I felt so much better. So it might sound silly and, and crazy, but I think that you could be in a toxic relationship with social media, especially our, our teenagers. Um, so I, that's, that's another thing we can maybe get into. I could t- tune in on that. So anyway, I'm rambling on as normal. Right. Sorry. I'm a rambler. It's toxic. Just kidding. (laughs) If your significant other does nothing but talk and won't (laughs) shut her mouth, you might be in a toxic relationship. (laughs) I think that we just, like I said at the beginning, I think everybody experiences toxic, even with the people they love and they choose to do life with. I think there's toxic points in your life that you go through and hopefully they get recognized, pulled out, and you get to fix them and move forward. But I think we just stuck our toe in with this. I think from all the articles I saw, this is just a few things, really. Right. There's, like we said, the narcissist. There's the codependent situations, um, which I didn't know codependency was, was so in-depth. That was the other word. that uh, we, we talked about that. We did a whole podcast on codependency. And so many, so many traits hit home. And we both looked at each other and we were like, I think we both may be codependent. Yeah, we may be a little codependent. <laughs> the, and, and you think... When you think codependent, you think of certain things. But, man, when we went through the list in our podcast, I was like, whoa. Um, but it's just. Yeah. Like, and like you said earlier, I think on a live, it's people might not know that they're people. A lot of people are raised and they have scars and they're they don't even know that they're being toxic. But again, like I told Brooke. Yeah, we cared for that guy. And we loved him. Right. You got to get out. It, you can't change people. That's You got to look out for you because it's toxic. And if it's toxic and it's bringing you down, you don't, you don't fix people. Both of our daughters, and they actually kind of were interested in maybe coming on and talking about this tonight. But then they went to do their own thing and we lost them. But uh, they might want to come on too and talk about I think it would be good for teenagers to hear other teenagers talk about toxic relationships. Because both, actually all three girls have been in... A toxic relationship and, and legit. I'm not. I'm not just saying. Oh, there was a bad breakup. Mm, yeah, but I mean, there were some special situations. There were some special situations, especially with Brooke. Dudes are cruel and women. Um, but, I mean. So anyway, that's that. But I think this has been a good podcast, and I think we'll shut it down here, and we'll follow up on this one with hopefully a small little panel of people who who want to share their experience about toxic relationships that they've been in. So I'm looking forward to that. Same. All right. All right. Peace out. Later.